And I would love for you to do it on a really personal level, not a donation to somewhere, but somebody that you know, somebody on your street, a friend, a family member, somebody that's lost their job, just step up to the plate and surprise them with something that's really from the heart and warming because People are desperate. I, all these people that had good jobs are in their cars in line at food banks. And it's so horrible to see this, but we each can only do so much. But together, if we all do something like this, imagine just how much change can happen. The Vidal Speaks Podcast. Episode 139, It's a Me Speaks. 11 actions you can take now that will support global change. Welcome to Vidal Speaks. My name is Deborah Vidal, former 11-year LPGA golf pro turned classical homeopath, certified plant-based nutritionist and wellness coach. Each week here on Vidal Speaks, we bring you knowledge, inspiration, or natural remedies to help you take charge of your health and feel your best. I believe health is freedom and knowledge is power, so tuning in each week will give you the power to take steps towards freeing yourself from the chains that hold you back from having the energy to do all you want in life. No matter where you are in your journey of wellness, it all speaks can help. I promise. Hi there, my friends. How are you? I sure have missed you and doing more podcast episodes because you guys know I love nothing more than having you around my table on Wednesdays just to talk about like-minded issues, passions, or ideas. And I really do love so much doing my podcast. And one day I hope to get back to doing more episodes. But for now, I just have so many cool projects going on and it's taking all my time. As you guys know, I'm enjoying my blog and I'm really enjoying my VS Club. The VS Club is really important for me because it's where I feel I can give all of you the tools that it really takes to improve your health and put your responsibility for your health into your own hands. Once you know how to treat everyday ailments naturally, especially with homeopathy, you save so much money going to doctors because they only tell you that you just need another antibiotic or that they need to cut something out or you need a drug like steroids for the inflammation. And all of these things don't do anything to touch the underlying cause of why you got those symptoms or conditions to begin with. So once you know simple homeopathic protocols for many everyday conditions and even for chronic problems that you may think are serious, and you learn that these can go away with remedies, you'll feel so free and you'll realize that, wow, I really can help myself and my family. And this is all without the dangers of suppression that come with the other kind of drug therapy. So the VS Club is really one of the most important things that I'm doing right now. And if you guys want to join, you know you can join at any time because I post all the live videos up and you can go watch them forever at your own pace. And the price is only $15 a month and that's just less than one little takeout meal and you'll learn a lifetime of protocols so you can save you and your family from all these ailments now and in the future. It's the best deal out there, I promise. So join today. Today I really wanted to do a podcast and since 2020 has been such a difficult year for so many people, including Mother Earth and all the animals that live on this planet with us. So I wanted to bring some positive vibes to this difficult year and speak about the actions that we still can take to feel good about our role in 2020. The main thing is that we take some action. And right now, as I'm speaking to you, the state of California is on fire. The state of Oregon is on fire. The hurricane is about to hit New Orleans. It's absolutely insane what's going on out there. And I just feel desperate. I don't wanna feel hopeless. So instead of feeling hopeless, I wanted to talk about some positive things that we all can do because times right now are really difficult, mentally especially. 
I look outside and the air is so smoke filled here in California. And it really makes you realize without clean air, we can't breathe. We can't grow food. We can't go outside. I can't even work. I can't go walking out on my hike. I can't go to my garage or my car without the mask on. It's so horrible, you guys. And although we know this stuff, when it happens, it makes you feel so grateful for a blue sky and fresh, clean air. And I am waiting for that time. But with the amount of fires that are burning right now, I'm pretty sure we're not gonna see a clean air and a blue sky for some, at least a month. It's so horrible. And my heart goes out to all the people that have been affected by these fires and the hurricanes and all the climate crisis situations. I have friends that have lost their houses. I have two family members that have had to evacuate. It's really, really terrible. So I just want to let you guys know that, you know, I put love and light out in the world every day, but I'm especially sending it to you. And since it's really frustrating for you and me and all those that have this kind of conscious spirit to kind of help save the planet and the animals and just to do our part while we're here on Earth, it's so frustrating to me because I feel like anything that I can do is a drop in the bucket when you're watching destruction right in front of your eyes. But we can't give up, you guys. We have to remain optimistic, even though right now today I would say it feels like it's impossible to be optimistic. I don't know. There's something about this fire and this air and all the toxins in the air right now. It's making people really hopeless, really depressed. And I don't think it's just the fact that there's fires, I actually think it's because those toxins, whatever's being released in the air, is actually affecting our brain. So I think it's all those chemicals that are being burned up and they're affecting not just our lungs on how we breathe, but our mental, emotional well-being because I've had several friends that are generally really optimistic people and they feel so dark and so, I don't know, depressed and just really, really down. And I feel the same. And you guys know, I really am an optimistic person. But I can honestly tell you to be really truthfully with you, it's felt so hopeless the last week. And I finally realized there's something in the air that's just making everybody feel like this. So I really wanted to do a podcast today where I had to force myself to really think about what actions can we all take and what can we do together to at least feel, you know, that we're doing our part. Because the problem is, is that the world is so big. And even if there's 5%, let's say vegans, which there's not, or 5% of really like-minded people that want to do good in the world, or whatever the percentage is, it feels sometimes like you're so alone because the world's so gigantic with 7 billion people. It doesn't matter 5%, right? So, but at least when I do my podcast, I can connect with you guys because you have the same ideas and you have the same motivation to do what I'm doing. And so it makes us feel like by coming together, and supporting each other, then we can remain more positive. And we really need to do that because it's really gotten difficult this year. Okay, so let's move on. And let me tell you 11 actions that you can take now that will support global change and help us all do it together and support each other and feel better in the process. Okay, action number one, and you guys know this, I know you know this, but I have to include it as number one. Eat more plant-based, become a vegan or a plant-based eater full time, make the commitment to go all the way with the climate in crisis the way it is right now, we need to do this 100%. But of course, you guys know, I appreciate every meal that anyone eats plant-based or vegan. And yes, it's still true that eating plant-based is the number one thing that we can do for our part in climate crisis. We can't just sit back and watch the planet flood, 
burn and get destroyed without at least feeling like we're not contributing to this. And we need to know that we're eating in a way that is life-saving to our resources and our planet and that we're not going to contribute to the climate crisis by eating animals like all the water that we waste just to water the grains for the animals and all the water to feed the animals themselves. It's millions and millions and millions of gallons that don't need to be wasted when water is so critical right now. And then there's all the fossil fuels used in the animal agriculture industry, and that's immense, and it's killing our planet. And needless to say, very soon we're gonna have too many humans on this planet. No, let me take that back. We already have too many humans on this planet, but very soon we're gonna have so many that we won't even be able to sustain murdering all these animals to feed the population. So we have to do something now. We have to do our part now. And we certainly have reached this level of population already because we can just look out and see how fast the destruction is going and how many animals we have to raise in these horrible, unhealthy conditions and murder these poor animals. 88 billion land animals murdered for food. And you guys, what's going to happen when we're 10 billion in the race here on earth? So I believe honestly that we are the keepers of this planet, but humans have instead destroyed and raped mother earth. And sadly, much of that has been for greed and money. And it just breaks my heart. So every single person I can share the message on how a low fat vegan diet or a plant-based diet benefits their health and saves the planet in addition and slaughters less animals, then I feel I did good with my little part. So eating plant-based is not only saving our planet and our animals, but it's also saving your life too, because plant-based eating is healthy and some form of this diet will reverse almost all diseases or symptoms. So if you're not there yet and you don't know that yet, then you need to just keep trying because I want you to get to move that slider all the way to 100% plant-based because we're in a critical place now and every single person that eats a plant-based meal is saving the earth. Action number two. Donate your time or money to help save the animals since we're losing so many in the fires and in the climate crisis. Look at what happened to Australia with the kangaroos and all the koala bears. It's so horrible. But in California alone, we've lost so many species and not only just species, but think about right now with half of our state on fire, all of Oregon on fire. What about all the bears and the desert animals and the forest animals. It just breaks my heart to think about all the squirrels and the lizards. These are all part of the ecosystem. And as I tell you guys all the time, you know, we are nothing without them because we all are in this together and we all need each other. The animals, the ocean, the air, the people. We have to realize that we are all one. And it's time that people get this awareness because we can't live unconscious anymore. There's no excuse for it anymore, actually. So if you don't have any extra time, but you have some extra money, then donate some money to animal sanctuaries that are doing their best to save the animals or to help any animal organization because they all need help. And then that can also make you feel like at least you're doing something good in the world to take action. And if you do have some extra time, then do some volunteer work, whether it's at a sanctuary or the Humane Society or fostering a pet that needs a home. However you can do it, just do something to help save the animals. They're in a crisis and I believe we are the voices for the animals and they're losing their home and they did nothing to contribute to this problem. So we're responsible to help them and speak for them. So action number three is kind of similar. It's about taking action to find ways to help replenish our forests. 
One way to do this is just become more aware about how to live sustainably using recycled clothing or recycled furniture or supporting organizations that are working really hard to try to stay ahead of all the fires and they're planting 500,000 trees every year, but these people need help and they need money and we need to back what they're doing because if we don't do it, who will? And how will those forests get replenished? And if we don't have our trees, then we don't have anything because as I just said, we're all one. And what about our air quality if all the trees are gone? So we really, really need to think ahead and stay ahead with all that we're losing at such fast rates. So if there's any of your favorite organizations that do good work in helping replenish the forest, then, or if you don't know of any, do your research and do what you can to support them because it's really important right now. These trees take lifetimes to grow and we're losing them by the hundreds of thousands. So we need to do something to ensure that at least we're gonna have some trees in the future if there is going to be such a thing as much more future. We still have to take our actions now for our children, for their children, and we have to do our part. So do what you can to help support those organizations that are taking action to replenish the forest. Action number four, learn to cook because cooking healthy meals at home instead of eating out is so much better. But I just want to say this because all our small businesses have gotten destroyed and all the restaurants I, I heard yesterday that 50% of the restaurants in that had to close in the pandemic are out of business. So I do want to say this, that when you do eat out, please support the small local businesses because these are the heart of our societies and our communities and the people that work and live in our communities. So if you are going to order takeout or go to a restaurant in California and LA, we can't go to restaurants. So for us, it's only takeout. But when you are going to order that, please try to support all the local small businesses. But my message here for action number four is to learn to cook because so many people don't cook. And then the quarantine came and they didn't know what to do. And where there was all this panic about like buying all these like frozen foods and things like this. But we need to learn to cook because food is medicine and people need to learn to cook and not just cook, but really get the awareness that what they're cooking is the medicine that they're putting in their body for their future health. And I really, really want you guys to understand this on a very deep level. So we all just do the best that we can and there always has to be a balance, but cooking healthy meals is how you will sustain your good health. Of course, there's always things like detoxing because to me, you're not sick, you're just toxic. But if you're eating foods that are toxic and you're eating dead animals and you're eating processed foods or foods filled with chemicals, then you're killing yourself faster every day. And cooking healthy can become such a fun hobby. I love to cook and I get it that not everyone loves to cook. But until you try something, you don't know it. And many people are scared to cook plant-based because they've never been exposed to it and they're just used to cooking what they grew up with. And it takes like anything, it's like learning a new language or learning a new sport. You really have to learn to do it. But there's so many beautiful beautiful cookbooks out there and people are home now more than ever before and it's a great opportunity to just learn to cook and just take it easy little by little learn one great plant-based recipe maybe every week and if you love it then write it down and then do another one the next week and pretty soon in two months you have eight great recipes. And if you want to do two a week, then imagine you have 16 and it's so delicious and it's so healthy. But more than that, it is your health insurance. And I really want you guys to realize that food is medicine and you want to feed your body this good health. Action number five. Many people are ordering online everything they need because they're not able to go out or they're afraid to go out. And I understand that. But if you can, because of the situation of the pandemic, 
we have lost so many businesses. You guys, I was driving my scooter down Melrose the other day and I was so shocked. I looked to my right and all I could see is four lease, four lease, four lease, four lease. Look to my left, four lease, four lease. I'm like, oh my God, this is Melrose. Melrose in LA is just, you never saw a four lease sign there. It's crazy. And most of them are like beauty places or nail salons or little restaurants or little unique clothing stores or home stores where you could buy cool gifts for people. And they were all these individual small businesses that make LA the city that it is. And I can't believe when I look around and I drive down that street today, it's so sad to me. So if you guys need to purchase things online, which most of us are doing because either stores are closed or we're not allowed to go out or we go out and there's too many people or we have an underlying health condition and we can't go out or we're having to stay home and take care of our children or our or our elderly parents. So these are all reasons why we're all more at home or sadly because we've lost our job. So whatever the reason is, we're all more at home and you should use this as an opportunity when you do order to be very conscientious about the companies that you support. So look online for a product. If you find it, what it is you need, then do some searches around and see who's selling that. And if you can afford to not always just pick the lowest price, then pick the one that's gonna make you feel the best about supporting because we need to revive these small businesses. They are our neighbors, they're our community, they're everything to our cities. We need these guys to come back. And it's so devastating right now how many small businesses are out of business. So we need to do our part to try revive these and keep them in business as much as possible. Action number six. Take some meals to an elderly person that lives near you or that you know who's not able to go out because a lot of these elderly people still aren't able to go out because of the virus. My dad is 96 almost, you guys, and he has not been out of the house since January and he needs to stay indoors because he's in the highest risk category. And so we do everything for him, but he's just enjoying his time listening to his music and watching movies. But, you know, thank God my brother is an angel in helping my dad and taking care of him. But we all need to do our part for all the elderly out there. The world is about having respect for one another. And this is the problem that I have with people not wanting to wear a mask because we're wearing a mask to protect people like my dad, who still are here on earth, who still are living and have a high risk to get the virus. So we should be respecting them and doing our part. So if you can make a little extra when you're cooking your dinner and just put it on a plate and take it over to a neighbor and just do a nice gesture and just say, I know you probably don't cook a lot yourself or you don't feel like doing it and I just wanted to bring you a nice home cooked meal and share this with you. I've done that to our neighbor who's 84 and she so appreciates it. I've even done it to our neighbors who aren't elderly because I know they're busy and they're working and so am I, but you need to sometimes make a little extra effort and if I'm already cooking, I just make extra and then I pass it around. It's just a really nice neighborly thing to do, but especially for the elderly. So do whatever you can because you know, our elderly are our wisest people on earth and we need to take action to show that we care about them. So do anything you can, not just take a meal, whether it's a ride they need to a doctor's appointment, but offer a helping hand to the elderly. Action number seven is about learning a new passion. And this is a fun one because it's more for you and it's gonna really give you something because a passion is something that you're gonna learn that you love so much. And there's things that you've probably always wanted to do and never had time for like cooking or baking or sewing. Maybe you wanted to write or write a novel 
or you wanted to start a blog, or you wanted to learn a new language. Yeah, all of these things are things we've all talked about doing, but take the time to really learn a new passion because I think we're all going to be home more for a while now. It's in our future for a little bit. So learning skills like cooking can bring so much to you. It can not only bring better health for you and your family, but it can help you cook and take to a neighbor, or you can sew and sew some masks for people, or you can write a blog about expressing your feelings and asking people to help take part of the change, or you could learn a new language because it's something you've always wanted to do. But the most important thing is to realize that having a passion in life is really important. And it's so wonderful when your passion is something that also can help other people. So if your passion is cooking and you cook for you and your family, you're helping your children, you're helping your husband, you're helping your friends when they come over and you're helping them learn about the quality of good food and how food is medicine, but you also can help by cooking some meals and giving them to people in need who've lost their job and don't have money for groceries or to an elderly person who doesn't cook or can't cook or can't go out. So you can learn a passion and you can help at the same time. And the same with sewing, you could be making clothes for people or for children or making masks for people. And even if it's writing, you can write and encourage people or get people aware about what's going on because writing is powerful. Knowledge is powerful. Just learn something because knowledge is power. And when you have this kind of power, then you have the freedom really. But understanding how you can improve your health within your own means, not having to run to a doctor, not having to believe what they tell you is always the truth, that you have to take this medicine or get a surgery, and learning how you can cook differently and just plan different meals every day, and that food will become your medicine to heal your disease and for you to get better. Imagine how freeing that is going to be. So there are many passions that can be just for fun, but there are other passions that are life-changing and we can make any passion a passion for us and a passion to help other people. And I encourage doing that because I always believe the more you give out in the world, the more you get back. So helping others is the single biggest thing that you can do to get abundance back, in my opinion. Action number eight, if you're a person that still has your job and you haven't lost your job because of the pandemic, then I want you to take action number eight. And that is to do something to help somebody that has lost their job. Maybe you can offer $50 a month. And honestly, I know it's not always about money because you can offer to give them a ride or you can bring them a bag of groceries every time you go to the grocery store. So it's not always about money, but sometimes for people, they don't know what to do and they don't think about maybe what kind of food they eat or what can I do for them, but you can give them gift cards or you can bring bags of groceries would be the best thing because at this point, we're talking about needing the basics, food, money, air, water. All of these things are being threatened right now. And because some people don't like to accept money, then it's just better to bring them a bag of groceries or bring them a gift card from a store or bring them a big bag of veggies from your farmer's market or bring them food for their pets. Any way you can help somebody who's lost their job, it's so devastating right now how many people are out of work. Look at all the people that have lost their job and there's no real opening for them to get another job. If you're in the restaurant industry, how do you go get a job when 50% of the restaurants are out of business and we can't even eat in a restaurant here in LA yet? So what do we do with all these thousands of people that have lost their job in that industry? And that's only one industry. So if you're lucky enough to still have your job, then do something that can make you feel really good to help those people that don't have a job. And I would love 
love for you to do it on a really personal level, not a donation to somewhere, but somebody that you know, somebody on your street, a friend, a family member, somebody that's lost their job, just step up to the plate and surprise them with something that's really from the heart and warming because People are desperate. I, all these people that had good jobs are in their cars in line at food banks. And it's so horrible to see this, but we each can only do so much. But together, if we all do something like this, imagine just how much change can happen if we each take these steps to make a change. Then the change is a bigger change. So I ask any of you out there that do still have your job to reach out to somebody who hasn't and do something really nice for them, but do something that's a very essential thing like buying them food. Action number nine is for those of you out there that have lost your job, I just want to remind you that you need to reach out for help. It's really important for people to know that you need help and to ask for it because sometimes we just suffer alone and use your gifts and your services and offer them in trade for something else. Like if you know how to do something, you could say, how about if I do this for you and then could you give me some food or be resourceful and just learn like how can you do some bartering or trading and just be really creative and find ways to think out of the box. This is what people are doing so much right now and it's what we really need to do. And one thing that I can't stress enough because it happened to me when I lost my job is we need to think about how we can create more than one stream of income for the future because if you have a job and you lose it then suddenly you have nothing but maybe you can use your creativity to find a way to do something online like start a little blog or start a little business or sew some things and sell them so whatever it is just be really creative and think out of the box of how can you create a second source of income because I believe that's going to be the way of the future and I think it's going to be a long while before everybody goes back to work so business are all going online and doing things like this, but it's just going to become really important to put your attention into your creative skills and barter when you can and give people what you have in exchange for what they have. And I think that's the best system of all because then it's an equal exchange. But I just want to let you know my heart goes out to you guys, but I also want to remind you to ask for help and be creative and think in the future what you could do to create another source of income. Action number 10 is just to live more sustainably than ever before. For example, like don't go out and buy new clothes. Go to recycle clothing shops. You know, here in LA, of course it's LA and we have really so many cool ones. I often buy most of my clothes from there because a few of my favorite stores ever are these stores. But now more than ever, we need to do things like this because we need to lessen our footprint here on earth. And shopping like this makes me feel so much better because I know I'm not wasting all these resources that it takes to build one lousy piece of new clothing. And then if you're building something, you know, go to these places where you can buy recycled wood from barns that have come down. Not only does the result look so cool when you do it that way, but you're saving energy, you're saving resources of the earth, and you're lessening your footprint, which is so important. If you need to buy furniture, then go recover old furniture instead of just throwing it out and buying new stuff. Don't waste your food. Don't use too much plastic. Reuse all these bags that we can. Do what you can to reuse and recycle and make your footprint really small on this earth. It's so important now more than ever. And lastly, I just want to say, if you haven't ever purchased anything from Etsy, that's E-T-S-Y, Etsy.com, it's mostly artists and people that are all making things from recycled wood and, and you're supporting artists and it's really cool and it makes you feel good when you give people money like that rather than buying from something that's just new and wasting the earth's resources. So if you did want to buy something, maybe you can buy from someone on Etsy that is already doing their product with recycled goods.
And the last action is action number 11, my favorite number. It's just to tell you to get involved and don't sit back. Because if you just sit back, I guarantee you, you're going to be depressed. Step up and do something now. Take as many of these actions that you feel inspired to do and just watch how much better you're going to feel. Smile, reach out to somebody, whether it's your neighbor, your friend, or your family member, but reach out and do something good. Times are tough right now. We're all alone and we all need help in some kind of way, whether it's just support, whether it's food, whether it's money, but make some action and some effort to share quality conversations with people that you love. It's really important to support each other because the last months have been really dark months and I think it's so important for us to reach out to each other in these times where we've been alone for so long. But also, remember what I tell you, when you do something for others, you get a hundred times more back. So take action today and do something out there for someone that needs help and just watch how it'll make you feel. I know so many of you out there are struggling and my heart goes out to you, but it's really important that you know there are people out there that care and it's times like this that many communities become closer. So be sure and reach out and ask for help if you need it. I hope you guys feel at least a little more hopeful after today's Me Speaks. It's really important to remain hopeful because it seems so hard to do that this year. Normally I'd say, this too shall pass. That used to be my favorite saying. But you know what? This won't pass because climate crisis will only get worse until we do take some action. So today's episode was to inspire each of you to take whatever action you can, whether it's contributing to a friend or a family member, whatever you're doing is contributing to the healing of the planet. So please take action today. Well, you guys, I know you know what time it is, right? Yep, it's time to say goodbye, but only until the next podcast, and I hope that's really soon. And when that is, I'll see you right back here around my table. But until then, ta-ta for now. Vidal has spoken. Remember you heal with a plant-powered diet, homeopathy, and detoxing, of course. Peace. Be healthy, be free, live life.